And so we want to optimize the information. So the way we're asking questions to get inspired should be open questions so that you really open up and set the floor if you want for a lot of information to be shared. Welcome to Dialogue Creates, more than talk, where we explore issues and solutions together through the lens of dialogue. Thank you for joining. Your hosts, Hitta Vanderpool and Leon Jaworski. Hi, Leon. Uh, it's great to see you and great to have you here. We uh, we haven't been in this setting just yet, so it's uh, it's the first that uh, you and I are actually doing the podcast uh, for Dialogue Creates, More Than Talk. Very excited and uh, happy you're uh, with me here today. Thank you, Hedda. I'm so excited to be here with you as well. And uh, been really looking forward to an opportunity to record one of these podcasts with you, my friend. So I'm very excited to be here with you. Yes, yeah, same. And you and me together, we've come up with uh, an interesting topic for our viewers and listeners. So also a big welcome to all of them. And we hope that uh, you will be inspired uh, because that's one of the topics we're going to talk about. It's inspiration and creativity and what that has to do with uh, dialogue. And, um, you know, Leon, that uh, you, uh, Susan and myself, we're always referring to dialogue as a way of being from where we participate with whatever comes on our path. And um, that path can be uh, unfolding, um, but also maybe can be influenced uh, by ourselves while we're walking our path in life. And uh, I think that's where inspiration is an interesting topic to uh, to unfold together, to see what, uh, what comes up for both of us. And uh, that leads into creativity. And I know, Leon, you now by uh, the, the many sharings that we did, and I just know for a fact that you're very creative. So I'm anxious to hear a lot about your view and experience and uh, uh, of, of being dialogue and from there being inspired and being uh, creative. So what are the, the first thoughts that, uh, that come up for you when we talk about inspiration and, and creativity? Uh, I love this, Hedda. This is going to be so much fun. Uh, for me, inspiration and creativity immediately sparks my musician's brain. Uh, so that all ties in together. And at the same time, I feel like there's so much in life that we can gain inspiration and therefore exude creativity from. One of the obvious ones that I know you and I have discussed uh, with Susan, of course, at length is, is nature. Nature being a beautiful platform for inspiration and an opportunity to let go of the busyness of daily life to find creativity. I also find that I'm inspired by others. I'm inspired by others when they are, when they drop their guard and when they offer their own inspiration and creativity. And I feel like a genuine openness ties all of this together through dialogue. So in being creative, in being, being open and aware and allowing for inspiration to occur naturally, for me is, is where I find a lot of creative energy. Right. I like that. And, and what struck uh, me was the, the phrase dropping their guard and maybe even dropping our own guards uh, as a prerequisite for uh, getting into that uh, inspiration, that field of inspiration from where we then create. Um, 
And I, I, when I look at that and, and observe myself, when do I feel at ease enough to drop my guards? Um, the thing that comes to me is also curiosity that plays a role in that. Because if I'm not curious, I will not get into that field of being open where I will most probably not even notice the many ways of inspiration around me uh, and for that matter in other people. Um, I'm not sure if I told this before in, in one of the episodes, but I used to travel a lot when I was still working with uh, Lucas Bowles, the um, uh, drinks distributor uh, and producer. And every time I was sitting in an airplane, obviously I was sitting next to somebody, but the amount of times that I was open and curious enough to investigate and explore that person sitting next to me uh, was very limited because I was in a state where I thought, no, this is finally my time in this airplane and I just open up my computer and do some work. Maybe I'll watch a movie and I'm not bothered about the, the person sitting next to me. These days, however, I travel a bit less, but when I do, I have made a commitment with myself to actually get to know the person sitting next to me if that person is actually open to uh, start a conversation. But it requires maybe an, a, a conscious commitment with myself to put the effort in to be open enough and to reach out and to start a connection with the person sitting next to me. And I think that's maybe uh, a source for getting inspired uh, because there's going to be an exchange that is ignited from uh, that energy and that commitment. And then in that exchange, I most certainly will be inspired by the story by the person by the life of that person sitting next to me so that that came up so it it's it starts off with maybe even a conscious commitment with yourself to open up and to create that space to actually notice the sources of inspiration around you how do you how do you experience that yourself i love the example of traveling and being on on the plane I often feel like I'm closing myself off. This is, again, like you had said, my time to focus on my own thing. Um, so for me, having that openness, and I love that you said the curiosity. It ties into a common thread that I've experienced in teaching my students how to exercise their creative ideas and to make them reality through music. And that is having this, this childlike mindset, this willingness to be so open that you have to let your guard down. And if we, if we look back at, at ourselves as children or we use children as, a, as an example for our adult selves to see through the lens of, children are, are not influenced by societal norms yet they are very unabashed in in their expression and in their curiosity and in their questioning of what is this what is that maybe if we apply that towards our understanding of life as adults but remove that that guard of having to be uh, of a certain presentation we might be able to see through this lens of, of curiosity more like a child would and apply our wisdom, ideally, as adults to express our, our creativity and therefore inspire each other while feeling the inspiration for ourselves. Yeah, that's great. And I, I recognize this and I think it's a, it's a challenge throughout you know, growing up is to actually st still stay connected to that child's awe of, you know, exploring everything around you because you have no idea what it is, what it can do, 
And so with that explorative mindset, you get inspired, you know, you're looking around and everything is like new or, uh, you know, something to discover. And I think along the way, we are challenged because we, we lose that because some of it we have already experienced. So we know. And um, and then we assume a lot more that we think we know, but we don't. And it kind of kills off that uh, that curiosity. And I think one very simple question uh, can can trigger that. And that is what if mm -hmm. what if if we ask ourselves that question in any situation? You know, what if the person next to me has a very interesting story to tell? What if I am walking around in nature and somehow get inspired by something that will come on my path? And I have that child's awe in, in looking around and really observing everything that, that is presenting itself. So the, the what if creates a lot of possibilities, I think, and, uh, and opens you up to, um, maybe even get into a creative mindset as well you know what if i get inspired and from that i get ideas uh on the thing that i'm stuck on or uh you know on the challenge that i have in front of me to create something to create something from out of nothing what if i think that's an, an, a very important question that we uh, we should ask ourselves a lot more often than we do I couldn't agree more. And as you were expressing this idea, you you truly pulled the words right out of my mind when uh, you said, what if is, is a way to open up? That's exactly how I was feeling as you were describing this. And it reminded me of moments when I've been inspired by my students. In a classroom setting, for example, there might be a lesson plan that I'm going through or showing a concept of music production in, in my particular case. And I love the moments when students would ask me a question that I've never considered myself before. What if I could do X, Y, or Z thing with this thing that's designed for a completely different purpose? What if we break the rules for a little bit and try something that this is not designed for. And I think those are the moments of inspiration where creativity truly shines. And in my personal experience around that, getting asked those questions really helps me to learn because perhaps my own creativity didn't take me to that particular question. So now I'm forced to find a pathway to the answer and in doing so i'm learning while learning with a student while we're both being creative and ultimately both inspired by the entire process yeah i like that and i think two things jump out immediately and it's uh, the willingness to learn and therefore you're open to questions that are being asked, but asking questions might lead to uh, inspiration as well. Um, and then uh, we should note the difference between the closed questions and the open questions, of course, because if we, if we want to have an inspirational uh, source, then we will not get there if we only ask closed questions, because the information we are getting maybe from that source of inspiration is only yes or no. And so we want to optimize the information. So the way we're asking questions to get inspired should be open questions so that you really open up and set the floor if you want for a lot of information to be shared. Um, so I like that the, 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 the willingness to learn the openness to ask open questions and to um and to step into that space uh, one of the other things you mentioned I, th I think is is nature that you said um at the beginning i remember an exercise i've done 
a long time ago and it has inspired me uh, tremendously and it it was called streetwise i don't know if you've heard about this but how it goes is that in a city not even in in remote nature or a natural environment but m mostly a human build environment as well do you set out the a certain parameter say uh, within a block or two blocks and uh, each and every one person uh, in the group gets like 10 minutes or 15 minutes to go out there and walk with an intention so you use you, you, or maybe even with a question that you're struggling with uh, at the time and you go out and you ask these people to be open and to observe everything around them in the block and see how they get inspired by what they're seeing that is connected to the intention or the challenge at hand and i remember my experience that it was i was in awe not even child's awe but i was in awe because everything turned out to have a meaning and was connected somehow because i was willing and open to see it but there were texts on uh, on trucks driving by that inspired me i was going wow wow this is amazing you know it has it has something to do with my specific intention or or challenge a street name uh, a person smiling back to me uh, you know all these little things but it all started with me being intentionally open for it open to be inspired and then the answers or the inspiration lies out there it's everywhere it's and it's always there it's just depending on how we look at it that we might see it or might not even see it and so i think that was a, a beautiful experience uh and again it's called streetwise which uh, i will never forget and i think it's really related to the topic that we're talking about today absolutely i i love that what that did for me was provide a, a wonderful example of the importance of observation and i think we can apply observation in so many different ways as far as tying it into dialogue and the way that we can maintain inspiration and growth through that observation is key in terms of observing ourselves i love the analogy that that you've used often uh, in our dialogue sessions elsewhere about observing yourself from above standing on a balcony and observing yourself we we should be in observation of ourselves and when we're in our daily lives much like you expressed there are there are times and i know people in our audience watching will say yeah, I've gone through life and realized that a sign I saw uh, applied to me in that moment or a street sign had something or I got a sign from anything else, you know, maybe hearing someone walk by or whatever it might be. And those moments would be missed without a conscious decision to be observant and to observe the world around us so as we again tie it back to dialogue if we observe another person's viewpoint body language experience emotion all of these things in dialogue i think that allows us to truly be dialogue because we're not completely focused inward even though we should observe ourselves it's very important to observe the world around us and the environment that we're in and the environment that someone we're in dialogue with may be in even though we're in the same physical space it could be different from their perception yeah yeah and it's really the way how we observe that opens up a certain space or not Mm. Um, it is also what we want to see, right? That sometimes plays uh, plays a part because if we 
are not openly observing, but we are observing from a space where we want to see something happening, then um, most likely we're moving also away from what we uh, call inspiration. Um, but observing yourself, observing is then the next balcony that uh, that we can stand on. So um, yeah, I like that as well. And I think being dialogue comes with that notion of curiosity being open and it's it's from there that we uh, embrace uh, whatever comes on our path and i think it's also from there that we get ideas to start creating so it's the uh, and, and we often talk about that as well it's the emergence of something uh, David Bohm talked a lot about uh, the implicate order in which everything is already connected and and basically everything is already there. It just needs to be transmitted into the explicate order and gets a more tangible, concrete form, which I think has everything to do with creativity. And the inspiration comes from the wave that goes through implicate order explicate order back into implicate order and we build on each other um, if you look at the most recent innovations maybe even technical innovations they are built on a lot of previous innovations and creativities um, and so it is a constant unfolding and unfolding that that would lead to the expression of creativity that then inspires somebody else to build on it and take it forward and create something new again. Um, and, and speaking of that, what comes to mind right now is the pace with which innovation and creativity is actually now happening in, in these current times. And I, I also think that has an impact on us as human beings, you know, to keep up with that pace to navigate through all these um, rapid innovations and constant changes requires something from us as well as human beings uh, that that came up as well. I think you're absolutely right. And, and I wanted to touch on one element that you uh, inspired me with uh, in what you were just describing. And that is to consider that around creativity, being open is to not have an expected outcome. And when I sit down to make music, I may give myself a goal or a challenge. One of those challenges might be really limiting the tool set that I pick to use in that time in order to be more creative with some, some limitation. But having an expected outcome in terms of creativity and inspiration, I feel kind of puts that wall back around. So I just wanted to touch on that because you, you said this in a beautiful way. And I just wanted to put a pin on that, that having an expected outcome when we're trying to be creative and inspirational, uh, I, I think could be a hindrance and being open for that really is important. And to your point about the speed at, at which things are are growing through technology and inspiration, I think there's a lot of benefit to it. I think there's also a certain element of fear in myself around it, because often I feel like it's a snowball effect, and maybe it would be prudent in my you know left brain mindset to say, hey, let's pump the brakes a little bit and, and observe this from a different angle. So I think there's something that, that ties in there with the ability to shift between our inspired and creative mindset and over to a more pragmatic mindset, but not getting stuck in that at the same time. Yeah, it's, it's almost like a dance, right? That, yes. uh, how you go about these two things that uh, maybe even might sound like polarities, but we're holding them in the same, yeah, in the same way. Um, yeah. And lastly, what I wanted to touch base on is that unattached to the outcome, because I think, well, how I 
challenge myself to cope with that because sometimes I am attached to a certain outcome. You know, it happens. Uh, it comes from a strong desire or maybe a, 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 a certain drive or an ambition. And this needs to happen. Um, and uh, I do see that um i then skip the question what if you know i i skip the giving space to possibilities that i haven't seen yet and that might you know uh, unfold throughout the process of being attached to a certain outcome um but i won't be able to observe that i won't be able to sense into that if i'm too attached to one single outcome and so when I consciously check with myself, sometimes when I do feel stuck, then usually one of the reasons is because I am attached to one specific outcome. And then what I do is I transform that attachment into holding the intention. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm not holding it like this, but I'm holding it like this. So I, the, the outcome is tr transformed in or rephrased, if you like, in an intention that I then hold like this. And how that intention is unfolding is now open because there's a lot of space up here that I still, you know, leave for things to unfold. Uh, but I do influence because I set the intention. Uh, but I don't limit it. To just that and that helps me a lot to get back to that question of what if to get back to that child's awe and exploration and being open to maybe observe other possibilities and other outcomes i think that's a very strong note for us to to end on and i'd i'd like to invite the rest of our audience to ask yourselves what if share your inspired creativity with us in the comments section please engage with us we want to hear your thoughts around this and we want to respond to them so offer some of that for us and and we will continue this hopefully in the comments section below and we really want your help with subscribing to our channel if you find value in what we're providing for you here give us a like on this video any of our other videos or a dislike if you really don't like it we're open to that too um but we're curious we're curious we for curious. that yes <laughs> <laughs> so maintain your curiosity and and participate with us we would appreciate that Hedda, thank you so much for this inspiring dialogue with you today i'm i'm grateful for it my friend same. I enjoyed it and looking forward to many, many more with you, uh, Leon. So um, thank you very much. And uh, until we meet again in one of the next episodes of More Than Talk. Absolutely. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you for participating with us. Please visit our LinkedIn page to share your thoughts, questions and suggestions for future episodes. Remember to like us, share, and subscribe. Until next time, this has been More Than Talk.